This thing was so small, TSA was self-checkout. <laughs> yes. I did. I took a flight in yesterday. I got in late last night. I flew in from Williston, North Dakota. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Smallest airport I've ever been to. You can back me up on that. The smallest I've ever... I mean, this thing was so small, TSA was self-checkout. <laughs> I put my bag up and I ran it through and... I sent it back. <laughs> well, I want to do a good job. <laughs> I got employee of the month. Um, <laughs> precious people, just sweet people. But I'm telling you, a very relaxed atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? I, I flew in and we got off the plane, little tiny plane. I get off, I, I walk down the little cat blocks that they slid up there for me to get off on. Just let us off right in the yard. Uh, the pilot got off behind me to take a smoke break. Uh, so I go inside and, and, and I have to do the show and then I came and I fly back out. And this is when I find out really how small it is. Cause on this flight I'm leaving, it's an even smaller plane, a little 10 seater. And y'all, I had, yes, honey, I know. <laughs> That's what I said. And I'm not fearful, but it did increase my prayer life. Um, <laughs> y'all, I got on there and had the sweetest little baby flight attendant. She was precious. Probably on a little work permit. Well, I don't know how old she was, but I know she wasn't alive during the Reagan years. Um, and I'm gonna need them to be older, cause I'm older, right? I mean, I don't have anything against little Becky, okay? But listen, I don't want my flight attendant to have a cute little ponytail. I'm gonna need her to have some crow's feet. <laughs> Like, if there's anything that's happened on this plane, if we find anything on this plane, I need to know that Gertrude and Bruce Willis know which wire to cut. <laughs> but that's not what I have on this flight. And I'm used to Atlanta, y'all. I fly out of Atlanta every week. You know, those flight attendants there, they have on uh, hose and heels and dress blues. They make you feel safe like the Marines. <laughs> But that's not what Becky had on. I'm telling you, this relaxed airport had me concerned. Little Becky had on a red t-shirt and a pair of khakis. <laughs> like Becky works part-time at Target. <laughs> Just thought she'd whip in and pick up a shift. <laughs> Now, Becky's going up and down the little aisle here, and, and I can't tell what she's saying, but I notice that people are starting to get a little annoyed with her until she gets to my seat, and now I know why. <laughs> Becky asks me, ma'am, I need you to verify your seat number, your name, and your weight. <laughs> I said, girl, you're trying to get people killed. She said, of course not. Why would you say that? Why would you say that to me? I said, well, baby, you just asked nine women ahead of me and they lied and I'm about to. <laughs> Do the math, Becky. <laughs> That's a hard, but I finally made it back home. Made it back home to Atlanta. And I love to travel. I, I, I Listen, I get to do it so much. I'm not complaining about it at all. Like I said, that airport was real relaxed, but they were just the sweetest, precious little people. Um, but I think that about most places I'm at. And I think I love to travel and get out and meet people because for years I was a homeschool mom. Oh, do we have some homeschool moms in here? Oh, awesome. I thought I heard a glue gun fire up over there. <laughs> So do we have some in the house tonight? So you know what I'm talking about. You don't get out a whole lot when you homeschool, right? So I didn't, and so now I'm just living that up. I get to travel, and, uh, and people ask me all the time, Lisa, why'd you homeschool? Was it because you wanted your kids to pray? Was it because of the violence? I'm like, no, it was way more sacred than that. I homeschooled because I hate fundraisers. <laughs> I'm 
telling you, you send your child to school in August and by October, they are little Amway people. <laughs> and they show up on my door with that big old fat packet. <laughs> Honey, if they never get playground equipment, it's fine with me. <laughs> I didn't have none. <laughs> and my kids play with the same thing I played with, a broken stick and a propane tank. <laughs> And I don't send my kids to your door trying to get a new flower bed in the backyard, so <laughs> keep them off my porch. <laughs> wow. And I don't know what y'all sell here in Utah, but back home in Georgia, we sell cookie dough. Do y'all sell cookie dough here too? Yes. Oh my, what is this conspiracy? <laughs> cookie dough. I'm telling you, great big tubs of, we're all hustling 50 cases of cookie dough when my kids were in school. In a state with the highest diabetes rate in the nation. And what are you going to win? A light up yo-yo and a Justin Bieber poster. Listen, if I sell 50 cases of cookie dough, I want something a little bit more expensive and a lot more useful. <laughs> like health care. Um, <laughs> But I started homeschooling, really, because I had a home. <laughs> I've been to school. Sir, I've been to four colleges. I didn't graduate from any of them, but, um, <laughs> but I'm not a quitter. So uh, I, I'm still plugging along. And y'all, I, listen, I thought it was going to be a breeze until that first week. And we did math. Have you seen math lately? <laughs> I don't know when it happened, but they changed it. All of it, ma'am. They didn't leave a part left. All of it's changed. And, uh, and don't get me wrong. Now, I can do third grade math, okay? Sally has six apples and Johnny has uh, four apples. They put them together. How many do they have? Ten. There are homeschool moms in here. Absolutely. <laughs> Ten apples. But seventh grade was not the same. My oldest son had problems like if Sally has four apples and Johnny has six apples and Johnny takes a bite off all his apples and then Johnny takes a bite off all her apples and then he puts all the apples together in a basket and gives that basket back to Sally. Sally takes that basket and gets on a train. <laughs> traveling a hundred miles an hour toward the sun. <laughs> And then she gets hungry and eats one of the apples. Now what does she have? I'm like, that's easy. She's got mono. <laughs> and that's why we don't eat after people and that's what you need to be learning. <laughs> Grading on a curve down in Atlanta. <laughs> don't nobody turn me in. <laughs> I'd hate to have to come back and burn this place down. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> kind of. So, um, so I love, I love being a homeschool mom. I do. I finally graduated them. I have two boys, um, which are precious, and they're awesome. Two boys. My youngest is 18, and my oldest is unemployed. Um, <laughs> Well, I gra graduated both out of homeschool, and then my oldest went away to the uh, Dream Center School of Ministry, went away to Bible school, finished that program. Yeah, now he's back home living on my couch because they told him there that Jesus paid it all. That's <laughs> what happens when you're reading out that Bible app. <laughs> But I love it. His dad's so patient with him, y'all. And thank goodness. You know, one of you in the, in, in the parenting relationship's got to have a little bit more patience than the other, and that's my precious husband. And uh, he's kind of patient with me, too. <laughs> and uh, so we've been married for 22 years. When we first got married, we weren't real compatible. Yes, honey, that's a... Thank you. 22 years. Yeah. yeah. That's a long time not to smother somebody. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. 
And so, yeah, we weren't real compatible at first. Um, well, he's the kind of guy that likes sports, and I'm the kind of girl that likes naps. Um, <laughs> what else? Um, he was Catholic, and I don't even drink. Um, <laughs> Sometimes that one just moves across the room. <laughs> we were waiting on you, sir. <laughs> but, but we finally, you know, I took him to my church, and mine was way different than his, okay? If you know anything about Catholicism, it was just way different. I went to a non-denominational, free, spirit-filled worship church. Tiny bit different than Catholic. And uh, he embarrassed the mess out of me, y'all, when, when we first got there. He kept staring at this woman on my row the whole time. And I was like, would you quit staring? And he said, I can't help it. I think she has a question. I said, baby, that's for Jesus. He said, well, if he calls on her, I'm out of here. We went to our pastor and said, hey, you know, we, we were recently married. This was when we first uh, got married. I said, how do we become one? I hear all these older married people talking about becoming one. How do you become one? And he said, well, that's easy. You serve together. So we started serving in youth ministry together before we realized we didn't like other people's kids. <laughs> You think it, I say it, that's how we play this game. <laughs> and so we get in this in youth ministry together, we had this little eighteen year old couple who got engaged on purpose. And I yeah, I took that little girl aside and I told her, I said, Honey, you don't know what you're doing. And she said, Miss Lisa, I don't know what I'd do without him. You can't think of nothing? <laughs> You're applying yourself, Michaela. <laughs> she said, Miss Lisa, he, he's, my, he's my soulmate. Like, he knows what I'm thinking. Sometimes he'll even finish my sentence before I do. Like, baby, that is a control freak. <laughs> you better put a stop to that right now. But she was just done with me, y'all. She said, Miss Lisa, bottom line, when he walks in a room, I know he's the one. He takes my breath away. Baby, that is asthma. <laughs> if you get an inhaler, it'll fix that. <laughs> Baby, that ain't love, that's mucus. <laughs> well, you can't tell them nothing, can you? Young people just gonna do what they gonna do. And I, I'm not trying to pick on them, because I know it's, it's a journey. My husband and I had to try and figure out our love language when we first got married. You, you ever tried to do that? I found out mine 20 years ago was uh, acts of service and quality time. And it changes, though, people. It changes. Like today, mine's very different. It's carbs and air conditioning. <laughs> I tell young guys, you know, hey, listen, you got some learning to do. And these older guys, if she's over 40, let me help you here. You can ditch the flowers. <laughs> you get that girl some Freon and a biscuit. <laughs> Be the best Valentines of your life. <laughs> But I get it, I know it's hard. I'm not trying to pick on young people. I remember being young. Don't y'all remember? I remember being young and in love. You know, at that age, you don't even know if morning breath's gonna be a deal breaker, you know? <laughs> That's why I slept with a pack of chewing gum under my pillow the first six months I was married. I don't know why I say I slept. I didn't sleep, I slept the next day on my lunch hour because I didn't want him to know I snore. <laughs> I just lay there every night all posed up. <laughs> 
trying to act like my breathing was always soft like kittens purring. <laughs> and ladies, you can't hold that, okay? Like I'd get sleepy and I'd doze off and then I'd start snoring and then I'd suck that gum right in the back of my throat. <laughs> And then I jump up because I think I'm dying. <laughs> then he jumps up and I have to convince him we're being robbed. And... <laughs> he said that made sense. He heard a chainsaw. I'm just saying young people can't think that fast. <laughs> it's an acquired married skill. <laughs> oh, I do have to do something about this snoring. Because my husband's a patient man, but it's been a long time. You know what I mean? Because I don't do that little, like, breeze blowing through the leaves, like that's what it sounds like. No, that's sweet. I could take this roof off. Um, <laughs> And so I went to the doctor and I told him, I said, Doc, you got to help me. Like, you, I'm going to be eating a pillow here soon, okay? He can't take it no more. And the, and the longer this rocks on, the worse it gets. He said, Lisa, it's gotten so bad, the longer you've been married, it's because of the weight gain. Which don't make no sense. Because <laughs> my nose is the same size today. <laughs> as it was the day I got married. Matter of fact, it's the only part of me still fits in that wedding dress. <laughs> <sighs> I just think it's important to be trying to be healthy, right? I'm not making fun of that. I think you should be healthy and move more, eat better, yada, yada, whatever myths they got going. Um, <laughs> And don't come up to me after the show talking about clean eating, okay? Because I tried that. I tested that sucker out, and that don't work. I ate a whole birthday cake in the shower. <laughs> I didn't lose a pound. But I started, I, I just said, I got to do something. I got to join a health club or something. And so I, I started going to Curves. And, uh, and I thought I was trying to get a scholarship. And, uh, <laughs> and my friend said, D forget that. You need to do CrossFit. <laughs> Anybody know about CrossFit? <laughs> Listen, those people are insane. <laughs> if you don't know what CrossFit is, allow me to explain. CrossFit is where you work out in someone's garage <laughs> with a rope and a bucket <laughs> while they yell at you for $130 a month. <laughs> we were in there, they had me flipping tires. I was flipping tires of this side of the room and then flipping tires of this side of the room. I think that was a labor camp. <laughs> I might have been loading somebody's truck and I didn't know it. <laughs> but y'all, I, I found this, I'm gonna leave you with this. I found the perfect, perfect thing, Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness. Their whole slogan is no judgments. No judgments. So when I come in with a box fan and a carton of ice cream, <laughs> well, that's how I cool down. Um, <laughs> they don't say a word. But the best thing about Planet Fitness, y'all, you get a free trainer which is great because trainers are expensive. So I got my, fr my free trainer, his name was Steve. I knew Steve and I wasn't gonna hit it off real good when I first saw him because it looked like for lunch, Steve had half a Tic Tac. And, uh, <laughs> and Steve said, Miss Mills, listen, the secret to getting in shape and losing weight and just feeling better is you gotta have goals. Do you have any goals, Miss Mills? And I said, well, yeah, um, I'd like to be able to cross my legs. By myself. <laughs> he said, they need to be more specific than that, Miss Mills. Do you have some specific goals? I was like, okay. Right over left. <laughs> Work with
him as Steve. <laughs> so we're not working together anymore. Uh, <laughs> But I got this new one, and he's fabulous, y'all. His name's Hank, and Hank gets me. I think it's important when you're working with somebody on, on a health journey, just have somebody that gets you. And Hank said, forget Steve. Miss Mills, the secret to losing weight, getting in shape, and feeling better is you just got to have fun. And so that's why three times this week, Hank and I have been fishing. <laughs> I mean, I don't go. We FaceTime. But, um... <laughs> y'all, I think it's working. I ain't felt this good in a long time. <laughs> Provo, y'all are fantastic. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Give it up for Lisa Mills.